Okay, here we go. So we're back at Pure Portugal again, and today we're going to chat to the lovely Emma uh, uh, from Mount Oaks, who is doing all sorts of fabulous, amazing things there. Um, and find out a little bit more about what you're up to, Emma, if that's all right. It'd be great to hear a bit more about what you're, you've been doing and will be doing, hopefully. Fantastic. Thanks, Claire. Thanks for this opportunity. Um, yeah, so I say I'm Emma and I have been living here on this project since 2011. And this piece of land uh, was bought with uh, donations of money. So we don't actually own this piece of land. It's a little bit of a different kind of thing. We're an association. And um, mm -hmm. yeah. Barbara and I are the guardians of this place. And over the course of the last 15 years, there have been hundreds of people visit. No, thousands of people visit. In the wow. course of the year, you wow. know, we tend to have about, um, this year has been a very, very particular year, but because of the courses that we run or the fact that people come and just mm. have a sort of almost wild camping experience, we tend to have quite a few mm -hmm. people coming. But yeah, um, yeah, we're the, we're the current garden. A different year this year, though. Pardon? A bit, 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 of, bit, bit of a different year this year for you, though, I guess. It's all changed a bit from that point of view, totally I suppose. Totally different. Like many other projects, yeah. um, we, you know, last year decided what we were going to do this year, the courses we were going to run, the retreats we were going to host, and then um, we ended up being a place, a, a refuge for a group of folk who didn't want to go back to their host, their home. Their home. So. We, we did that instead. I can't see many places more that I quite like to be stuck, to be honest with you. <laughs> it sounds like quite nice to be. <laughs> it was, it was. I'm not, I, I would definitely have come to you if I was in Portugal. Oh, bless. It was, it was quite a particular time. And um, we have a general rhythm to our days here anyway. Um, seasonal rhythm. And, you know, we really try because of living so close to land, basically the land and the temperature dictates how we run our days. Um, mm -hmm. And that period of time, like from kind of like early spring on, we changed our rhythm to accommodate morning circles. Um, because mm -hmm. There was a lot of information coming in from the outside and a lot for people to process. But in general, our rhythm is quite, balance between work and rest and I think that is really really an important factor to remember in times when we kind of feel like we need to keep doing we keep need to keep doing yeah um in order for us to to do we need to we we also we also need the rest I think it's, yeah. absolutely it's a, it's a really good message and it's something that I think as human beings, we're not very good at. <laughs> we don't. We need to constantly be reminded to do it, don't we? For sure. Exactly. But then na again, nature dictates a lot of that. You know, in a climate yeah. like this, yeah. um, the institution really of the siesta makes so much sense. You know, yeah. Yeah. you know, get up and yeah. do what you, what you need to do early morning, and then by a sort of yeah 12 o'clock hopefully you've done most of your chores outside it allows particularly this time of year then allows you to really enjoy the beauty around you you know the river beaches the lake mm -hmm. it's in, mm -hmm. in this region that's that's kind of it's the point of being there isn't it we don't you know you don't just go to portugal just to then tick off chores you know you have to and actually i agree completely because when we first moved out the first year i remember really trying battle against the heat and the sun I didn't want to stop I didn't want to slow down I wanted to push through it and I think a lot of people do that actually um and then I realized actually that you can't fight it it's too hot it's too it's too exhausting just give in and enjoy the excuse if you like if you will it shouldn't be an excuse but enjoy the excuse and the reason of taking the afternoon off and going and sitting under a tree somewhere and it's so, I mean, it just forces you to live the right way, actually, I think. It's perfect. It's such a nice balance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And enjoy enjoy your produce. Yeah. Enjoy, enjoy what you've been tinkering yeah. around with in your garden. Because one of the things yeah. I'm yeah. really passionate about is how we take how we take gardens and then add nutritional benefits. So my big thing is fermenting, and I got into this, and there are a group of us in this region who meet, we're called the fermentalists, 
and we meet <laughs> once it. a month to talk and chat. Yeah. And that's also something, you know, I, I again, having having been here quite a long time at this stage, um, I can say that it's really lovely when people find their thing. So, you know, around here, there are people with all sorts of things, you know, whether it's the crocheting or the, um, you know, knitting together, whatever else. And there are a group of people yeah. in this region who just love to take what we have. Like, I've just, just found something on the table. These huge, like, you know, it, 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 it's uh, it. courgette season, but they taste really well when you ferment them, actually. And you can put all sorts yeah. of spices and, and, you know, they're there for you in another season when you're, you know, when you're. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, it's great. And it's I think, as you say, you're, that is the point, isn't it? You know, we slow down. We remember what's actually important. And, and sometimes we have to find what maybe matters. And what we, you know, we, many people, I think, when they first go out to Portugal, have never had the time to actually ask themselves what they're interested in and what matters to them. You know, and I think brings that out with you. I found that for me, it certainly gave me the real direction that I wanted, you know, I needed. Yeah. Right. I I yeah, oh. yeah. I think the slowing down is a real part of it. And there's something about this culture that um yeah, especially like since since we're here in summer, we'll talk about kind of the summer heat that kind of slows you down anyway. But um if we've come from cities and we're used to things being done do 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 like this. It doesn't re it doesn't happen like that all the time here. Sometimes nope. it happens, but more than likely, a task that you you know might have th thought to yourself, okay, in my list, I'm going to do this, 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 and a day. You might get one of them done. Um, but in the process, you know, you can either then that's a choice of how you react. To that you can get super super frustrated. Mm -hmm. Or you can mm -hmm. see that every little piece of paper or every little or interaction gives you a chance to know um, know the people in your area better. Like, mm -hmm. you know, one of the things that I really love about where I live is my wife is Portuguese. And at the moment, mm -hmm. my volunteers are all Portuguese. Mm -hmm. And so I get a great chance to, to practice the language. and. One of the things that I would say about this project, right from the start, had a vision of being a bridge um, yeah. between um, what I refer to as the new locals. So I know that the term expat is used a lot by um, folk who've come particularly um, from the UK. But that term, um, I don't know if it's because I'm Irish or what, but I, I, I have a little bit of difficulty with that term. So yeah. Dad coined this phrase, the new locals, because lots of people have moved to this area and they're not only from other countries, you know, they are actually mm -hmm. Portuguese who have moved, who are, who are making this migration, you know, from mm -hmm. the big cities to the countryside as well. And um, so it's always the beauty. And I suppose this does link with kind of a project that Pure Portugal are in the process of kind of initiating, which is more about these kind of community hubs and these places where mm. can, you know, have, yeah, have contact with others who, who are potentially um, from other, who have moved from other countries and Portuguese yeah. who have, have yeah. back to some of these villages where you know people have moved out moved out of um, yeah it's such a good idea it's such a nice thing it's something that we're very passionate about for sure and obviously it's the roots of pure portugal really but it, to know you guys and to see all of these communities forming um it just is so great to see as the, as as portugal is becoming more and more of a Sort of place where people are settling you know it's becoming it's not just newcomers so much as as people who have been there for years like yourself you know they've made their home and their life there and that that really enriches the community i think you know the, there's a deeper level of community in that for sure and i think it's that beautiful thing about kind of you know say that even that term local the desire is to become local you know to you know every time someone new comes into an area we hit we help we help to create a new culture and that links back to the fermentation because 
when you get the cultures right, you know, when you get the cultures mm -hmm. right, you can create absolute magic. And I think that really, mm -hmm. really excites me and um, about, the, you know, the new folk coming and linking this yeah. kind of bridge between folk who are already living here because, you know, my neighbours in the first years taught me so much um, you know they taught me so much about the gardening I haven't I've taken on some of their mm. techniques and married those with other techniques you know maybe mm. techniques but a real mix and for me again that's a mixture of culture which can which yeah is very beneficial um, yeah. yeah yeah absolutely Absolutely. Oh, it's great. Whereabouts are whereabouts is Land of Oaks? Can you tell us roughly a rough sort of so we can get a feel for where I I know where you are, obviously, but <laughs> can you give us an idea of where you roughly are? I guess you could say okay, so if you imagine the the map of Portugal and then you were to kind of draw and you imagine where Porto is and Lisbon, Lisboa, and then you draw a triangle facing Spain. That we're mm -hmm. sort of, you know, because we're equidistant in a way from Lisbon and Porto, but we are not that we're about 40 kilometers away from the Spanish border. In terms yeah. of where we are, we're in the region of Castelo Branco. Our local market town is Findau. And we are mm -hmm. in the in the site and just below a small mountain range, which is which creates this little microclimate here called the Gardunia. The Gardunia. Yeah, I miss those mountains while I'm stuck in Cornwall. I really am. <laughs> I'm really missing them. But you it's have beautiful. To see. You have to see. I know that's true. That's true. It does make up for it a little bit, a little bit, but not that much. <laughs> so I will share quickly on here so people can find the website. Mm -hmm. um, I'll stick it on here now. So if anybody's interested in obviously just seeing a little bit more, because you do some fascinating things, which I know. So obviously, some of these things have had to postponed this year for obvious reasons but the, the things you do is just absolutely great and I well as we go into next year it'd be great to chat to you again about what your plans are obviously coming into next year where it's a bit more relevant then for people yeah. but you you have a retreat still coming up is that right yeah. this year yes um in August and this really is for folk who are probably who are already living in Portugal um mm -hmm. We have a silent retreat. So this is, I, I was talking about that balance, you know, between working and doing and things like that. And my wife is a natural builder. So she does a lot of the building stuff. And in the midst of that, you know, I realize we can live these really busy lives and people, pr and, and, and the practice of silence is so, and I've, I've been, I've been running these retreats now for about five years. And they're really an introduction to silence because, okay, yeah, because they're only a weekend long. It's not like a big sort of ten yeah. day retreat or whatever else. And it's mostly nurturing, nurturing the soul, eating well, um, and yeah, communal silence. Um, Amazing. Um, so yeah, that's, that's coming up at the end of August. But I think that you can find that on the. So we can find this on the website as well, yeah. can we? We can find out exactly when and all about it. Fabulous. I think if there's ever a time that that space and that silence is going to be needed, it's after this year, because this year has been, for a year that not very much physically maybe has happened, it's been a hell of a year. <laughs> so I'm, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people who are going to really benefit from that, for sure. Absolutely. Sounds great. Yeah. So the end of August, you would say. Yeah, yeah. Time to pause. Right. Yes, exactly. And I think as things are starting to slowly edge their way back to whatever the world will be, uh, mm -hmm. it's a bit of a shock to people. I found it a bit of a shock. You know, I quite enjoyed yeah. having the excuse of not going yeah. anywhere at all and not having to justify it. And now it's sort of almost creeping back mm -hmm. to, you know, having to find a reason to be busy or find a reason not to be busy. And I think after that break, mm -hmm. it's even more noticeable because you stop you just stop the race for a little while don't you and you realize just how much you've been constantly on the go all the time and i think this is going to be a really difficult transition for people to go back to actually i really do and i think i Great think stuff. Because, and i th and i i totally agree with you claire and i think as a result of that um and I'm not the only person who's been saying this, you know, it is actually quite important then to develop personal practices that you put into 
your rhythm and your routine to to create pause you know whether that's on a daily basis or a weekly basis or a monthly basis in tune with the moon or not you know whatever it is but i it, it's that kind of yes we we can we can create rhythm and routine that allow yeah. allow us to be better allow us to ourselves yeah. yeah i think it's giving yourself the permission as well isn't it i mean i i mean i've got three small boys you know the little ones and they're manic life's really busy mm -hmm. and I stopped I stopped giving myself that time at first when I first became a mum I really didn't do it anymore for a few years and I felt terrible for it because I always have I've always done I've always practiced meditation for as long as I can remember really going right back yoga and things and I stopped and I really didn't feel healthy or well at all and I wasn't really my best person for it actually mm -hmm. And even now, sometimes it's really hard. You know, you're tired, you're exhausted from a long day and you haven't stopped all day. It's really hard to justify adding more things to the to-do list, even if they're good for you. But I now sometimes, sometimes it's just five minutes of just sitting quietly, not looking at something, not doing anything. And it's for me, it's, uh, it's sort of giving yourself the permission that it's that self-care and accepting that you are entitled to something to, that makes you feel better you don't have to earn it you don't have to justify it you can just do it yeah. and and it's literally just fine sometimes it's just three minutes first thing in the morning before i open my eyes and I, just think, oh, oh no, it's I just make myself do it. and i really feel so much better for it for giving myself mm -hmm. that permission you know so important crucial 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 for mental health purposes, everything it's crucial it really is i'm a much better person for it for sure I know I am as a as a mum as a wife you know just in general in my day it, I can be there more for people if I give myself that time that's the thing and it's very easy to forget that you can't you can't be there for people if you don't give yourself something can you say it's a very important method I think it's a great one actually thank you for raising it as well and hopefully it will in, remind some other people who have got caught in the rat race to uh stop and you don't need permission you can just stop <laughs> and they can just come stop. Drink, hopefully as well. Just stop. They can come and join you on your on your fantastic retreat. How many people can you have on retreat? Do you have a set number of people who can come? Yeah, on this one, the max will be eight. That's what. Okay. That's the that's our um, that's the legal limit here in Portugal for get for gatherings yeah. and courses at this time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Normally great. it's only twelve anyway, so, so it's definitely. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice number, I think. I think that's a really nice number of people. It's great. Oh, well, look, thank you so much for your time today. I'm sure you've got plenty to go and strimming or go and get on with. <laughs> the farm is never ending, I know. No, no, this, I'm coming into, you see, the thing is I have to practice what I'm talking about. It's coming into the afternoon and then I will rest. I will head to a river beach with yeah. a friend. Well done. That sounds perfect. That's a lovely way to spend the afternoon. But thank you so much for your time today. And um, everybody can, like I say, you can pop over to Mount of Oaks website and find out a bit more about what you're up to there. And we will definitely catch up with you again soon. Sure. So oh, thank you thanks, Claire. And thanks, Pure Portugal. Like, honestly, the amount Aww. of people I know in this area who have moved is, as a result of finding oh, a home. Um, oh, that's lovely. Work. So well done, you. Oh, well done. You. Well done. Oh, well, it's a big team effort. So thank you so much. That's really great. I'll catch up with you very soon. Take care. Bye. Bye bye. bye.